Today's video is going to be so quick, I didn't even bother putting the forerunner all the way in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage, and today, as promised, I'm going to cover a filter that's never ever talked about. Hell, most people don't even know it exists. So the filter in question is for your emissions air pump. So this is going to affect not only us Forerunner guys, fifth generation that is. Uh, there is a very large number of Tacomas and the later uh, FJ Cruisers 2010 to 2014. We are of course referring to the US models only. Um, so inside this pump, there is a filter, which I will show you in a second that if not addressed over time, it will cause issues. But here's the problem. Let me turn this camera around for a second. So the reason why it has taken me such a long time to make this video is because I wanted to exhaust every single avenue to confirm my suspicions. And those are as follow. So if you do want to replace the actual filter that is found inside this pump, uh, you're not going to be able to. Yes, I know that is a massive bummer because if you do want to replace that filter, it kind of defies the entire purpose of trying to service it in the first place because the reason why we're trying to service it is so that the pump doesn't go bad or even further down, the air switching valves don't go bad also. So what do we do? Well, first, before I show you guys the solution, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some examples of some filters so you have an idea with a considerable amount of mileage on them and the condition they're in. And then I'll give you guys my honest solution for this. As you guys will see here in a moment, starting a vehicle sometimes can have its challenges. That's Give it a shot, see what happens. Well, we got lucky this time around, but what if I told you it doesn't have to be a guessing game and you can stay on top of things like the health of your battery. But now you're probably saying to yourself, well, if this S2000 was mine, how could I be so sure that it's going to start on me if I take it on a little trip? Well, this is where my friends from Foxwell come into play. They send us this amazing battery tester that has so many things at a fraction of the cost. Check it out. As I'm sure you guys know by now, I usually only promote things I do believe in. And I have to say for a little over $100, this is a no-brainer. This particular device is multiple applications not only does it test your battery but it will also test your starter and your charging system it will detect bad cells on your battery and not only does it test batteries on top post it will also test the ones with your side post as you can see it has plenty of functions you can pick different languages to choose from and with this large backlight lcd display is super easy to use as you guys can see here from my testing of my particular battery, it is very clear what my action is. I will need to replace my battery. I do want to take this opportunity to thank Foxwell for sponsoring this episode. Do take advantage of their sale going on right now. But let's go back to the video. As you can see here from these images, this is an air switching valve that actually failed, but in this particular case, for once it wasn't so much because the valve itself was sticking but because the moisture that was uh, introduced into this particular valve actually caused so much corrosion that the studs basically broke but of course we went ahead and saved the customer some money and we corrected that by rethreading those same studs but sometimes that's not always the case and this particular one 
little hard to see on camera here, but the valves are actually stuck. And because they're stuck, now this air switching valve assembly has to be replaced. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how do the valves get stuck? The reason why they get stuck is one, debris, two, and usually the case, moisture in the system. This moisture is usually introduced into the system because that filter fails. They fail all the time and I see them fail in many different ways. The next one that you're gonna see here is basically clogged up. This vehicle actually had codes for it and we had to go ahead and replace the pump. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It ended up sucking the filter all together. This will be the angle in which I'm uh, going to show you guys what you have to do. I know it's not the greatest of angles, but believe me, this is so simple that you should have no problems doing that. So obviously you see its location. You're gonna place your fingers underneath this cover, because that's what it is. Place it to the side. Remember, you're still going to need to use it. And what you're gonna do to expose this filter is you're gonna go ahead and remove the one Torx that is sitting right on top of this pump. T25 is the correct Torx. It's always ready tidy, lefty loosey. Break that loose, put the screw to the side as you will need it. And now, this one requires a little bit of persuasion, but what you wanna do, uh, actually, there was no persuasion. <laughs> Oftentimes they give you a little bit of resistance, but you have to just wiggle it about, for example here, and push it up. And there you have it. Uh, you will either find it stuck to this cover or stuck to the pump itself. In either case, it's very simple to know where this filter is supposed to be. The markings are right on the case itself. So as you can see from a vehicle that has 37,000 miles, this filter is perfectly fine, but wow, look at that. It's definitely all sorts of little things stuck to it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what a good solution is, but also let me bring the camera a little closer. I wanna show you what it is that we're actually protecting here. So when you do take a closer look, uh, there are some gears in this pump. Basically as the air goes in, goes through the filter, and you know, like in a circular motion and then on to this pump. Now it is very important to keep this clean for obvious reasons. Just like the next point I wanna bring in which there's two ways to go about this. One, you can clean this up. I would not recommend pressure here because that would have a tendency of perhaps disturb the material. It's totally up to you. Either way, this needs to go back inside the vehicle or I should say the pump dry. Uh, you could wash this, but the thing with washing is then you might want to leave it to dry in the sun. But if you then compromise the composition of this actual filter, that's where the problem lies here. And still, again, I think it's a bummer that Toyota does not allow, to, uh, allow you to buy this filter by itself. You would have to buy the actual pump that does come with the filter. A little bit of a bummer, but here's the solution that I came with. What you do is... Pull these tabs to the side, push this out completely, and this is the filter I went with, excuse me, and I'm gonna tell you why that is. Because this filter does not need to be oiled. Yes, KNN also makes a filter that is in those exact specifications. The key is the diameter of that inlet side, but this filter right here does not need to be oiled. And how clever would this be that you install this like so, you could even write in your cover when you replaced it and yeah, replace it every 30,000 miles. Why not? Every 30,000 miles, replace this filter and you know that you're protecting that pump. It's either that or you can completely ignore the entire video and expect to replace this pump. I've seen them anywhere from uh, 150,000 to 200, 250. Never seen one last more than 250, unless properly taken care of. Meaning, 
you stay on top of the filter situation. And again, I'm not telling you, you have to go this way. Although I gotta be honest with you, this is very appealing to me. And I'm gonna tell you why, because once you see me completing the entire thing, it's visible. Yes, the cover will be over it. Cover is super easy to remove, but it's visible. You can actually see the condition of the filter. Not to mention, I mean, I am coming to you guys from New Jersey. People that are in dry climates that have desert-like or dusty situations, yes, this will get dirty. Yes, this is very inexpensive to replace, and you can go ahead and replace it at whatever interval you want. But I can assure you, if you live under those conditions, you might want to inspect this one because odds are this is not going to be looking so good. It's most likely actually suffocating said pump, which then causes other problems to our switching valves. In case you guys don't know, this is a switching valve right here. And you do, of course, have another one in the opposite bank, as you see, like so. So this doesn't just affect the pump. It could potentially affect those switching valves. But let's go ahead, remove this piece and I'll show you guys how it looks with this one on when you do install this filter that's my personal opinion do not reinstall this one because the key here is knowing the condition in which your filtration system to this pump is at so you then will rely just on this one no longer on that one before I do go ahead and install this one of the hardest parts with this uh, particular uh, installation is people oftentimes have a hard time separating this one from that one. Now, as you can see, I obviously did not do this on camera because it would have been very difficult. This is actually not that hard to do. Uh, some say that these tabs need to be broken. You really don't have to do that. With a flat head, you can separate them apart from the housing one by one and they eventually, the key is inside there, those tabs. Those tabs will eventually spread away enough that this will eventually slide, slide off. So let's go ahead, install this, and then put it in the pump, and I'll show you guys how neat it looks once you actually do install the cover in it. As you guys can see, it is already starting to look the part, but wait a second here, because now you're gonna go ahead and, remember, I told you not to get rid of it, you're gonna reinstall this, and trust me, when this is finally sitting in place, you won't even know that there's actually a filter there. As you can see, this looks very OEM. Once again, this is the reason why I wanted to bring this to your attention, because I know some of you do want to extend the life of these vehicles beyond 200 plus, 300. I mean, listen, it is all up to us. You maintain it, you stay on top of it, and anything is possible. I hope you guys found this small little installation to be easy to do and super easy to follow along. That is going to be all for me today, guys. Again, I hope you found that to be easy. As always, the link to that filter and anything that you need for this particular job will be in the description down below. Until the next time, I hope you're enjoying your cars wrenching on them and taking really good care of them so that they will last you and i will catch you guys on the next one